Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to listen up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies. All right, Ryan, we're going to do this a little bit differently this time. I have some good and bad news for you. What do you want first, the good or the bad? I don't have any <laughs> ugly news, but the good or the bad? Always bad news first. So let's, let's do the bad news first. Bad news first. All right. The bad news is we have to wait 16 more days, I believe. 7, 14, 15, 16, I believe. I believe 16 more days until Huskies opening day of basketball, which is kind of good news, isn't it? Because 16 days goes by pretty quickly. Yeah. So I guess you want the 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 good news now yeah yeah bring on some good news good news is and i mean this in all seriousness um i did receive some messages in the mailbag and emails right no phone calls um but you know how we usually think sometimes it's like junk scam mail but i had to view it uh, review it very close closely looked it looked it over and opened it and they were some uh, UConn, diehard UConn women's basketball fans. They cannot wait to meet, not me, Ryan Renner in UConn, Maryland at UConn. And it's coming, Ryan, November the 16th. You know, and with that said, I, I had to, you know, it it had, it almost had me, you know, like a heavy heart because I actually, to be honest with you guys, the, the real star is right. I don't give him enough praise is right here. That is the real star. So, Ryan, I can't thank you enough for everything, even stuff that doesn't even have to do with this podcast. So I don't put the spotlight enough on you. I know what you're thinking. You're like, all right, come on, let's go, Phil. Let's get down <laughs> into business. But again, I can't thank you and emphasize this enough, all jokes aside. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you from everybody. Obviously, you can see up there north in Yukon. Just thank you, Ryan, for everything. Yeah, definitely appreciate it. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, I always try to give my best, of course, for the podcast. And I think you do, too. So uh, I think, it, you know, it's greatly appreciated by uh, a lot of people up north, of course. And, and we definitely appreciate all the support. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait to meet uh, some of you guys too up there. It should be a really fun time. Uh, a li little bit nervous, I think we both are, but uh, yeah, yeah we're uh, you know we'll uh, we'll figure it out. But it, it definitely should be a really fun time. Definitely can't wait to go up there to Stores, Connecticut, meet some of you guys. Uh, finally, watch the team play in person. So uh, no, we're we're both really excited for that, and uh, yeah, can't can't wait can't wait to go up there. Nerves bring out the best in people sometimes. So hopefully that's the case with you and I, and uh, <laughs> that we're not shy in front of her because we're definitely not shy in front of this camera here. But I tell you, when it comes to in person, sometimes that's different for a lot of people. So I promise we will do our best to not be shy towards everybody. And but Ryan, as we hope the case, let's get down into business. We hope the case nerves. We talk about nerves that comes in March a lot every year, and we hope nerves. Uh, can just be that key factor that really turns up this UConn women's basketball team and and really showcases what they really have March of next year. But let's get right down into business here. You know, I saw an article earlier, uh, Becker's UConn women are, are favored um, to win the Big East. Um, and with that said, I'm sure that doesn't surprise you. I'm sure all of us hopefully have the uh, UConn Huskies winning their conference. And Ryan, I want to backtrack backtrack very quickly to what we have coming up this week. And although it's like going on 10 o'clock, right? 10 o'clock Eastern time. You, we usually don't record this late, but I'll tell you what, Ryan, hopefully everyone wakes up tomorrow going to work. Hopefully they turn this on and listen to this in their cars and, you know, driving yeah. to work in Yukon. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, hopefully they would, they will hear us tomorrow morning if you guys are already in bed. So sleep tight, Ryan, right? Sleep tight, get the good sleep. Um, actually this week we have, I know you said coming up our big episode. I mean, that was a hit last year, the starting lineup, predicting the starting lineup. And then not only that, I know we have another one. Um, and I can't really off the top of my head now. I told you, oh, it's to talk about which opponent, which team, uh, do you think will challenge the UConn Huskies in the big East, specifically the big East, which big East team would challenge the Huskies the most. So we do have that episode coming up. But for now, Ryan, I'm going to tell you very quickly 
here. What I saw, I saw earlier in the week the keys to a successful or what to watch for um, during the 23-24 season. Um, and shout out to CT Insider again for this. And I love to read their insight, and their opinions. Uh, I love everything that they have uh, for us each and every week, it seems like. So I saw where, you know, Paige Becker's return. Well, I know, Ryan, we covered that a lot. And I know where we saw about uh, staying healthy, which that's no surprise, right? Staying healthy. But then I scrolled down, Ryan, and I thought it was interesting. I thought, I told you, we need one whole episode on this, Ryan. Nika Mule. Nika Mule, right? And Ryan, the headline was, where does Nika Mule fit? All right, Ryan, in Becker's absence last season, Nika Mule had one of the most historic seasons in UConn point guard history. If you remember, Ryan, she broke the uh, she broke Becker's single game assist record with 15 and later Sue Bird's single season assist record with yeah. 284. So, with that said, we know that she can play defense, lights out, right? She's a great defensive player. She's all around, all around great player. Defensive, specifically a lot, a lot of the times, defensively, you know, defensive right. flashes. What do you think, Ryan? What do you think? Where, what would Gino do with Nika Mule now that Paige Beckers is hopefully 100% healthy and ready to go? What What's Nika Mule's role now? Yeah, I think it's an interesting topic because when you look at Nika's fresh, freshman year in 2020, she only started 15 games, played in 23. Meanwhile, when you look at Paige's freshman year, started in 28 games, averaged 20 points, five rebounds, six assists. Of course, won AP Player of the Year as a freshman, uh, a couple other a awards as well. Uh, and I, I think Nika kind of at first kind of struggled to find her role now, I'm sure, you know, coming over from Croatia was quite a culture change, took some getting used to for her. And as she said before, she was very uncoachable when she arrived in stores, Connecticut. Uh, and, and the next year, her sophomore campaign, even though Nika played in 10 more games than Paige, uh, her, mm -hmm. her numbers actually went slightly down a little bit. So unfortunately, Paige was hurt uh, for more than half of that season, but uh, I think it, it it was kind of a whirlwind for for the whole team, uh, you know, during that year. But uh, you know, kind of navigate their way through the season, and of course, at this time, uh, Chris, uh, Kristen Williams and Avina Westbrook were still on the roster, and I think that kind of yeah. had a big effect on why Nika wasn't seeing a lot of minutes her freshman and sophomore years in the past mm -hmm. season last year, twenty twenty two to twenty three. Paige is out for the whole year. All of a sudden, Nika has to transition into a field general leader role for this team. And obviously, like you kind of mentioned, she she uh, did pretty good breaking all those assist records, the Sue Bird assist record. Uh, of course, you know, a whole bunch of defensive statistics. And I think, uh, you know, despite Paige coming back this year, I don't really see Nika having a down year. I think she's going to continue to be a massive facilitator, strong defensive leader. And I think she's going to set the tone for most games, spark their intensity for this team. Nika's never really been in you know, the type of player all four years here. She's never really been in an offensive, you know, mindset kind of player. It's always been defense, always yeah. bringing the intensity. So, you know, the offense isn't really the role that she plays on this team, but uh, her points per game definitely did go up last year. Without Paige in the lineup, that might go slightly back down. Uh, of course, with having Paige Becker's, we hope, uh, back completely healthy. But uh, I still think for Nika, obviously, the assists are still going to be there. Great rebounder, great physical rebounder. Uh, and I think, of course, the you know the defensive statistics, statistics will also still be, as, uh, be there as well as far as uh, the steals and blocks go. Yeah, and if you really take close look, so going back to the highlights, I was looking. She doesn't really foul that often. She has a tendency to play great defense. She stays out of foul trouble, and obviously that's the the name of the game, right? Don't foul yourself out. Yeah. Um. With that said, you know, very quickly, I'll give you my take on this one, and not that it means anything, huh? Um. But I tell you what, I thought about it, right? I thought about it, and I thought how lucky you, me. And all the rest of these people are to watch us, Ryan, uh, our subscribers. Because I'll tell you why. 
I never really remember talking to this specific height about a good problem that UConn finally has. This city finally has a good problem. And what I mean, Ryan, is it's a question of, hey, you have one of the best, if not the best players in the whole country coming back in Paige Beckers. So now, guess what? Now you have another healthy player that's behind <laughs> a Paige Beckers. <laughs> so, you know, I thought about it. I'm like, man, I don't know if there's a lot of times where Ryan and I have been on this podcast talking about good problems. And this is one of them. That's why we had to raise that red flag. Well, a good red flag. It's called a green flag in this case. But we finally had to, and 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 it's so big because I'll tell you why. When when you see her dribbling down the court, when you see her stealing, I mean, she almost had, she's like a, I don't know, I keep bringing up these football terms, like an Ed Reed in basketball, right? You know where the ball is going before it's even passed out outside of the arc or outside inbound. So, she has a tendency to steal the ball, take it by herself, uh, charge down the court, and score. You know what that said, though, Ryan? You have to wonder. I think, obviously, I agree with you. I think that we're going to see more out of her maybe offensively than we have ever before. And I know Gino, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think Gino had said something like, yeah, Nika Mule, this is her fourth year, is it? So she has to yeah. be like 20% better. All right, 20%, 20% better than she was in the three previous years. And I have good news to you and everybody else. I think that she will be that 20% and even maybe more than 20% better. Yeah, and you, you brought up the fouls. And I think, you know, obviously your first two years didn't really start that many games. Uh, it kind of condensed the fouls a little bit. But I think last year, uh, especially, you know, she started every single game, was one yeah. of only two players on the roster that stayed healthy the whole season. And I think more fouls came with that. The turnovers increased a little bit. That was kind of a, a whole team problem. So I hope Nika this year, I think, you know, she needs to work on uh, fouling less. Uh, and, and more specifically, I think, you know, handling the ball uh, a lot better. I think, you know, that's going to improve with having Paige yep. Beckers back into the lineup. Um, and we talk, I, and we know, talk, think... and we talk, and we talk about uh, very quickly. Just cut in there because I don't want to forget my training of thought. Uh, now that you bring that up, and we talk about how sometimes you know we never want to see a player injured, but we always had to take the bright side out of everything, right? And I don't forget what you were going to say, please. But uh, having Beckers out, it may have been. Now it's never good. Again, it's never good to have have any player out. But Ryan, look at the bright side of this. I mean, Nika Mule. Look at the experience that she got with Beckers out. And now all of a sudden we're sitting here talking about, man, Nika Mule. I mean, this, we, I, I didn't think, you know, you think about Aaliyah Edwards, you thought about Dorka Uhas, which she's gone now. You think about Paige Beckers taking over or, or, or uh, AZ FUD, right? Or well, what if Nika Mule takes over? How about that? And that usually that's just a defensive kind of player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it would definitely help the team offensively if she can, you know, improve on that this season in a lot of these games. And I think, you know, last year, I think we were talking about possibly seeing the big three and Nika Mule, Paige mm -hmm. Beckers, AZ Fudd, uh, all on the court together. And, you know, Caroline Ducharme as well. Unfortunately, Caroline's been dealing with some injuries, didn't get to see Paige uh, last year. So hopefully uh, we get to see all four of them out on the court together this year. Uh, so I think just, you know, in general, having everybody back healthy on the court is only going to help, uh, you know, all of them uh, collectively as a team. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think for Nika offensively, there's definitely a lot of room of improvement. And I, I think, you know, I, I'm going to hop on the bandwagon with you and say it can improve uh, a lot during yeah. this season. And I, I sure hope it can. All right. We have time. And I promise you guys, we go through all these comments. We appreciate you all coming through. Please keep commenting away. We will go with Jason D'Amico, though, this time. We only have time for one, Ryan. And I think that this is actually this is going to take a lot of time to analyze this comment. It's a good comment, like always. Jason comes through with good comments all the time. I am still concerned about UConn's bigs or lack of. Edwards is going to be solid, no doubt. But we need that tall center-like player to solidify the paint. Losing Dorka is going to be felt big time, in my opinion. Peace. And Ryan, the, the reason why that caught my eye, 
if you remember, I took heat a couple of weeks ago talking about the UConn Huskies, uh, their lack of of size, right? And, and I took heat for that. So what's your take on that, Ryan? Because lack of size uh, is what I had said, and now Jason is saying. But then all of a sudden, uh, I, ha- I I was blamed for, like, forgetting about the injuries. Now, yeah, I mean, I guess, what, 50-50 injuries and lack of size? I don't know. Well, I, th- I think the lack of size has kind of been a problem, like we've said before, really over the past five years or so. And I, I really thought, you know, losing Dorka last year when she got, of course, drafted by Minnesota, had a spectacular year in the mm-hmm. WNBA. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I really thought that was going to hurt UConn a lot more than what it did last year. Uh, Aliyah Edwards stepped up <laughs> in, a, in a really big way, had her best season by far. As a UConn Husky, it's going to be really sad uh, losing Aaliyah and Nika after this season. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Aaliyah stepped up in a huge way last year. Uh, definitely, I think we already had an episode on her. Definitely expecting her to continue that. Uh, going to be hard to to do what she did last year, but I certainly think she can do it. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, obviously we talk about Amari DeBerry a little bit. She's six six, so... Uh, that's a really big presence down there. So hopefully, yeah, we, uh, yeah, do not, do not forget about Amari DeBerry. Yeah. I know we come on this podcast for the last two or three weeks and we're guilty of that Amari, sorry, because Hey, now is her time too. Now again, see all these good problems. Now, Ryan, all these players, 100%, you know what? I'm not even going to say the word. And now we finally are starting to say, Hey, it's every single player on this roster. Ryan, now is their time. Yeah, and Ice Brady coming back as well this year. Ayana Patterson. So uh, there's definitely a lot of options. A lot AK more Arnold, options. shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, a couple more options than what there were last year, hopefully. Yeah. So uh, hopefully a couple of those players that I just mentioned can step up and you know be the player beside a, a, um, Aaliyah Edwards down in the paint. I think that would help the team out a lot as well. All right, Ryan, I believe it right there. This is one of our longest episodes uh, in more recent history I can remember. And that means it's time for bed. So hopefully, again, hopefully they catch us in the morning. We appreciate you guys. Like always, Ryan, 42 degrees, very cold. So make sure you cover up tonight when you go to bed. Clear outside. And Ryan, I'll leave you with this. The address, you know what the address is? Hopefully you catch on to this very quickly. One Civic Center Plaza. Hartford, Connecticut, the XL Center, Ryan. You have 16 days until Paige Beckers and company runs through that tunnel. Dayton, game number one. Phil and Rye on Listen Up.